Welcome everyone. Thank you very much for being here. My name is uh, Feiko Boerstra. I'm the uh, driver for Le Wagon Amsterdam. So why are we here tonight? We are here tonight to um, celebrate the graduation of Batch 99 here in Amsterdam. Twelve amazing people, they joined us on this coding adventure that lasted nine weeks. And before I tell you a bit more about their coding journey, I first would like to tell you a little bit more about Le Wagon. For those of you who do not know uh, what Lobogon is, we are a coding school. We bring technical skills to creative people and entrepreneurs. So why do we do this? We, we do so in order to help our students to find an interesting job in the tech industry. This could be either as a developer, it could be a product owner. So basically, that's what we do with our boot camps. We also organize these boot camps for entrepreneurs. We think it's very important for an entrepreneur to be able to code his own uh, products, to understand their own startup on a technical level, to know how to collaborate with other developers. So we help people to find an interesting job in the tech industry, and we help entrepreneurs to build their own startup and properly manage it. So let's go back to these um, 12 amazing students over here. Um, they went on a very intensive journey with us. The boot camp is nine weeks. These students easily did 50 to 60 hours a week learning new stuff. They didn't know how to cope before, so it's incredibly uh, heavy on them. I'm sure if you ask them, uh, maybe they had some dreams in, in code in week two, week three. I'm sure if you ask them later on, they'll, they'll, they can confirm it. Um, so we told them the back end. We told them Ruby, Ruby on Rails. We told them more about databases, we told them about front-end such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, those are basically the hard skills, the coding skills you need in order to build a product. But we do not only want to teach them the hard skills, we also want to teach them the soft skills. So for example, um, you have a great idea, you need to set up a proper technical workflow to make this idea into an actual, actual web application. So we teach them how to set up a proper workflow, how to collaborate with other developers, what to do if you have a merge conflict. So we want to teach them both the hard skills and the soft skills. And well, again, nine weeks, they were very intensive. Um, I'm incredibly proud of what you guys uh, pulled up and um, I think we should all be very proud of them because it was a very intensive uh, nine weeks. And therefore I would like uh, for a round of applause for the students, please. So, well, this has only been possible because we have an amazing team of teachers that were ready to transfer their knowledge to the students day in, day out. And for the teachers, I would also like to ask for a round of applause, please. So, bootcamp is nine weeks. In the final two weeks of the bootcamp, they have been working on their final project. Um, tonight, the students will present their final uh, projects. And um, our teacher for the final two weeks was Andy. He will be uh, telling you a bit more about the products and introducing each team. Uh, and I would therefore like to uh, um, give it up for Andy. Hello everyone. I was lucky enough to be a part of this batch as a teacher for the last two weeks. And uh, basically my job was to coach students through their final projects. And they managed to build some uh, really incredibly complex applications in nine days. I know uh, for users it's hard to appreciate the amount of complexity that goes into the back end and the front end. But I think everyone who coded here, they all know how much it takes. Still, we are not going to uh, bother you with technical details. So we're not going to be talking about the technical sides of our products. But each of our teams, they will step into the shoes of the user who are using their own products, and they will work you through the user journeys. So I'm also very humbled because uh, during these last two weeks, uh, students were largely working independently. And I think I got 
uh, less questions <laughs> than I expected. <laughs> and that shows that actually people are ready after this bootcamp to offer their, their, their services as freelancers and to look for jobs and freelance. And you know, there is this thing in tech world, living a digital nomad lifestyle. And we have one project that's focused on this part, on, on the freelancing part. And also, it handles a case where you're a freelancer, you offer your services, but also you may be in need of some other freelancer services. And this project is called Spidey, so give a round of applause for Team Spidey. Thank you, Andy. And I'd just like to say welcome to everyone, and thank you for coming to our demo day. I am Daniel. At the computer is my colleague Jake, and also in the front row here is my other colleague Luca, and we are the development team behind Spidey. So to start it off, what is Spidey? Spidey is a means to an end, in a way. It is a way for everyday people to find and hire freelance professionals for their everyday problems. So a little background about me. I first came to Amsterdam at the start of this boot camp. I've been working 50 to 60 hours a week, as FICO had previously mentioned. Paying for this boot camp, I've had no really time to find a job. I've had no income while I've been here. It's gotten actually pretty tight for cash. So what I've been doing <laughs> is I've been working as a freelance photographer. I used to be a photographer when I was in college, so it was very simple for me. And to do that, I've been using Spidey. So when I first log into Spidey, I'm greeted by this page. And just out of habit, I always go and look at my pending requests. So clicking on the pending request tab will take me to that page where I can see all the offers I've received where people are reaching out to me to hire me for a short job for my skills. And I can see Barry here, he's offering me $1,000 for a wedding in the United States this March. Pretty fun in the future, I have some time to plan, should consider it, but while I'm here I might as well go through my other offers. And I see I have two other offers, they're not paying as much as I'd like, but the big catch is they are still in Amsterdam. And sadly, I leave on Monday to go back to America, and I really don't want to spend my last weekend working. So I'm going to go back to Barry. Click $1,000, one wedding, why not? So here, I'm going to click Accept Offer. And what this will do is it will change the status of his offer from pending to accepted. And on Barry's end, he will be shown that I've accepted the offer, and he will be able to open a dialogue between us where he can send me more details about the wedding, what exactly he wants, and I'll be able to respond and say what I need to get that done. So as I had mentioned, I am leaving Amsterdam. I'm sad to go. It's been great. Best nine weeks. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but. On the plus side, my birthday is next Thursday. And I always have big parties. And once you have one big party on your birthday, everyone expects it the following years. So it's kind of expected I do it again and time and time. So I have to have this party. So to do that from Europe, I have to hire an event planner. I can't plan it myself. I'm not home. So through Spidey, I can actually do that. I'm going to scroll up, and I'm going to click on the Nearby Freelancers tab. And what this will do, it will bring me to a search option. And here I can say, I'm looking for an event planner. And where am I looking? Baltimore, Maryland. That's my home city. And I can complete the search. And what the search tells me is there are actually five event planners in the Baltimore area <coughs> that I can look at. There's actually one right in the center of the city that's pretty handy. That's going to be most likely the party location downtown in the city. I can click on that marker, and I can see who that is. Uh, Lena, four and a half stars. That's pretty good, but there's still four others. So I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to see what options I have available. Uh, looking through the list, they all are pretty highly rated, but they don't really have that many jobs completed through Spidey, so I don't really trust that in a sense. I like Lena. She has 14 jobs completed through the site. I feel like that makes her very well experienced in that sense, and I can trust that she will do a good job. So I'm going to actually look at her profile by clicking on her avatar or her name to see more about her. And here I can see statistics about the job she's completed in the past through Spidey. But more importantly, I can see her self-written summary 
I can see her past work experience, and then I can see her set of soft skills. Interesting enough, on this work experience page, she worked for a company called Social Drinking. Not gonna lie, that's gonna be the party. It's gonna be social drinking, so that sounds perfect. So at this point, I'm ready to hire Lena. So I'm gonna scroll up, and I'm gonna click on the hire button. This will take me to a new contract page. Here it says her pay of $30 an hour. That's her set rate. But I don't really care about that. I want this party to happen. I'm willing to pay her $800 for the entire contract. But I'm also making 1000 from this wedding in March, so I can, I can spend a little more. I'll say my budget's 1000 And then I have to give her a description so she knows what she's getting into if she accepts. And I'm going to say it's a birthday party, 50 to 60 people, and I need food and drinks. And from here, I'm going to click on Apply for the contract. And this will redirect me to the pending request page where I can look at my sent offers. But on Lena's end, this will give her the offer so she can physically see it and she can either choose to accept or decline. So if we give Lena a second to respond, we should see that the status has changed from pending to accepted. So hopefully this party goes unhinged. And that wraps up Spidey. We are a way for people to find freelancers whenever and wherever they need them. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for that amazing product. So Spidey here focused on individuals. And our next team is going to be focusing on businesses and on other on entrepreneurs. And uh, we all know the words sustainability, eco-responsibility, small, small footprint. This is on everyone's mind right now. And we have a team that are ready to leverage that and they are basically offering businesses a way to exchange their excess materials. So they have found a way to make money out of waste, and we are going to give the floor to Team Recircle. Hello, everyone. Again, thanks to all of you to be present here tonight. It's a real pleasure. So uh, I'm Victor, but I'm not only a coder. I sometimes moonlight as an artist. Therefore, I came today with my creative team, the heart, somewhere here, Willem, there, and the hands, Ryan. Together as a team, we, we make art, we make sculptures. We make big sculptures, amazing sculptures. We actually make the best sculptures. L lately, they're made of scrap metals and old engine parts, which we found quite difficult to source as input. Indeed, even though we are aware of this presence of waste everywhere, we found it very difficult to source excess materials. That is, what kind of waste, what kind of excess material, at what price, in which quantity, and in what location. But luckily, I've recently been introduced to Recircle. That does the job for me. So usually, when I go to Recircle, especially for our latest project, uh, I like to check the new arrivals. So after the land page, I check for the new arrivals. It's good for inspirations, and maybe there's something that may be suited to the project. But I know what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for old engine parts, scrap metals. So it, even though there's a lot of offers on the left, on the left hand side, I go to the construction parts and I look for machine parts. I don't care about glass and organics today. So when it leads me to the organics part, I, I know that there are a lot of offers, but I'm an artist and I'm, I'm business savvy and uh, my budget is quite tight. So I like to sort, sort things by price. I like to look at the better deals first, right? So this way, I get the cheaper parts first, the ones that would be fitted to my latest project. I am looking for something in the shape of a round. We're looking to build the chest of a bionic woman. So I can see here, I can see here up there in the middle that there's uh, a used gear parts that cost 80 euros per unit. Uh, they seem tempting, uh, but I'm always a bit wary of the first price materials. So I'll save this in my wish list and I'll have a look at it later. 
If I scroll further, uh, we just saw that there were some other round shaped parts. Yeah, car gear parts, 120 euros per unit. This seems interesting, so I'm going to click on the card and I'm going to look at the details. I'm going to look at uh, the rating of the supplier, I'm going to look at the quality of the materials, I'm going to look at what it's made of. It's still a bit too expensive for me, yeah, the location as well, it's pretty close to from here actually. Uh, it seems very tempting, but it's still too expensive for me. 120 bucks per unit, uh, I'd like it to be under, under 100 euros. So I'm going to contact the supplier and ask him if he's ready to, I don't know, make a move or he'll discuss the price. So I just contact the supplier in a, in a simple way. Can I get a discount? Yes, exactly. I am an artist. <laughs> 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 so, well, also on top of being uh, an artist, I, of course, I don't own a car. I ride everywhere by bike, and I like things to be close to where I live. I want to source input material for my amazing nape sculpture, but I'd like to know uh, if I can source it, because otherwise it won't, be, it won't happen. So I'll go to the search bar, and I'll type in Amsterdam. And this way, I can see look at every excess materials that is in my area. It might seem a bit overwhelming. Yeah, there's all this sawdust and the wood chips and the organics left over. I really don't give a shit about that. So actually, I'm going to refine my search and look for machine parts because uh, this might be more suited to my, uh, to my project. <coughs> and in this way, oh, there we come again. So we only have to find selections of the materials that are near, my, near me. So by looking at the map, I can zoom in and uh, look at the different markers and see, check for things that are closest to where I live. By clicking the one, the most central one on the Bloomer mark, yeah, luckily I live in the center. Uh, this seems very interesting, so I'm going to click on it. Check the details again, rating of the supplier, quality and the price. Oh, and this one is actually 87 bucks per unit, so this fits my budget. Uh, it's tempting, it's near me, so I'm going to buy it. I click on buy. I check the invoice, uh, the bank account of course, uh, who it is sent to, and I'm going to buy it now, so proceed with the purchase. This will actually send me to my dashboard. As a user, I have a dashboard that's made of several options and several cool features where I can check my latest purchases. I can also, as you remember, I put something in my wish list. So I can go to my wish list and check the last, uh, the last uh, items I was interested in and the ones I maybe want to follow up with. I also have access to my inbox, as you just saw, I can contact suppliers, keep up with them, and uh, yeah, basically strike a deal. And in the future, I also have access to my materials. If I have excess materials I'd like to dispose of myself, well, I can post this there and they also make money and help the circular economy happen myself. So to wrap it up, it actually, Recircle really is a marketplace where I can transform your trash into treasure while getting access to resources I need. So reuse, reduce, Recircle. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Victor. Another, another great project. But now, as we've, uh, as we've dug through, through waste, it's time to turn our attention to something beautiful, and namely fashion. And we have uh, a student here, sometimes students come to our boot camp with a specific idea they want to implement, but they don't have technical knowledge before they start. And after nine weeks, they can do a minimum, minimum value uh, proposition uh, of their product. So they can demo it to, to future possible investors. And uh, Jira here, he, she had an idea that has to do with fashion, with boutique retailers, with fashion designers all over the world. And in the last two weeks, she worked alone, and everything she's done is uh, made by, by one person team. So give a warm welcome to Jira, and let's hear about her product. Hello everybody, uh, I am Gida and I came to Le Wagon, as Andy mentioned, to build Space Station, which I can't wait to tell you about. So say spa Space Station is a business-to-business -business platform. It connects two kinds of people, uh, basically uh, retailers and fashion designers. Prior to this kind of product, you were not able, as a retailer, you only had enough time and money to visit a few places a year and access a limited number of designers and their products. And as a designer, you were limited to a few selling points in the world. And in addition to that, when a buyer buys from different uh, designers, 
they all have their own formats, and it's just a big hassle compiling everything into one place and having everything in order. So with Space Station, I, can, I, I, as a retailer, I am now actually logged in as Stranger. I have a concept store in Lagos, and I procure fashion from designers that I carefully select. Space Station allows me to discover designers all over the world, so places like Shanghai, Los Angeles, London, even more exotic places like Mexico City, Santiago, and even Beirut. Now I can connect with these designers and I can check out their products and source some good stuff for my customers. So the way it works is that I can get some inspiration, I can look on the map, and I can see what designers there are over there. So I maybe want to check that one out in Milano because actually my customers love him and I keep getting things that sell very well. So he's Umit, um, he's Turkish and he lives in Milano. So the way it works is that I get information about this designer. So he started in Milan in 2009. He's the main contact person behind the brand. He has the, the tags menswear and footwear, which I could um, use if I want to refine my searches. He has four collections, and these are his preferences. So the, his price level is somewhat pricey. Um, his method is FOB, so that's how he likes to ship his products. And his minimum order quantity is of 3,000. So you need to fulfill $3,000 in order to get stuff from him. And these are, this is an array of products that he has. So now we are on his current collection. We see that he has some suits. Uh, we have the wholesale price and the recommended retail price. And we can select an item to add it to our selections, which we will go to later on. And I can browse through different collections. So this is his fall 2018 collection. I think I want to add this jacket which is very nice, and I think the men, uh, my, my male customers will really appreciate. So I will add it to my selections, and then I will do some more shopping. So what about women? Let's, let's get some stuff for my, uh, my female customers. So I, click, I can click on women's wear, I can browse a little bit, um, scroll down, see you know, what different designers I have. Very interesting places, Nairobi, Moscow, New York. Um, but maybe let's get some, um, some simple stuff, some um, unicolor stuff. The bodysuit of Barcelona. That sounds like something my uh, female customers would appreciate. So I have information about uh, production. It takes, uh, up, yeah, I can see that it takes three weeks to ship, three weeks to produce actually, and two weeks to ship. And I, they also have another collection and they're present in Europe and the Middle East. So if I'm in Nigeria, that's good. Not many people sell that brand. I will select this item. And I will select also the blue one and the white one. I think these would sell well. So now I, I have some stuff to look at. I can go to my selections page. And I can see this is basically my plan for the season. And I, it helps me budget and see if I'm within my range of budgets. And it helps me keep track of the prices, uh, of the sizes that I'm getting. So usually medium is the most common size. So I will have this run of 5 times 5 frequently for every product. I will get these and I will have um, a total per designer that I will look at. And I can then place these orders individually. To refine my budget, I can remove products and I can edit this page as much as I want. Once I'm ready, I have the total down below for everything and per brand. And when I'm ready, I can place an order that will be received by the designer, approved, edited, um, uh, status updated, and so on and so forth. So that was the retailer journey that I wanted to share with you. This is what Space Station can do for a retailer. But as you can imagine, the other side is the designer who gets to upload their collection and uh, offer a virtual showroom for, for retailers to look at and purchase their brand. So yeah, Space Station, that's a, that's a nice name. Uh, it's, uh, basically, that's what it does. It's a station, it's a gateway, and it gets uh, designers and retailers to space. So thank you. Thank you, Gida. And we are going to continue talking about beauty, but this time we're not going to be talking about fashion. We are going to be talking about well-being. 
And actually, I must say that uh, during the past nine weeks, our students sort of missed out on well-being because they've been coding for 10 hours a day and they didn't have enough time to cut their hair, uh, basically look after themselves. And this is probably the first time they see so much people in so months. But uh, so while having that in mind, like uh, a dream to be pampered, uh, some of our students came up with the idea for a startup called uh, Home Trip, and that allows everyone to find a well-being specialist in his area and uh, arrange a visit. So let's welcome Team Home Treat. They will tell us more about their product. Imagine, after this uh, demo evening, you're going home. You had an exciting evening, but then you realize that on Monday you have an important meeting. I'm going to talk but tomorrow you're busy. So make sure you're so on Sunday the salons are closed. And you need to have a haircut. So what do you do? Introducing home treats. And for the first time, it's now possible to get your body and beauty treatments anytime, anywhere. So I want to show you how it works. So we have designed this to make it as fast, as easy as possible. So let's say I need a haircut uh, for tomorrow. So we select a haircut. Tomorrow, location, Amsterdam. That's where I live. And see, okay, which specialists are available tomorrow in my city? Okay, which one would you pick? I think Sophie, Sophie, she has worked at some major salons and she specialized in male haircuts. So that sounds good. Ah, she's available tomorrow evening. So let's say make a booking for. 6.50 tomorrow p.m. Um, ah, she's also doing hair trimming treatments. Only 10 minutes, 20 euros. Okay, why not? And then we create an appointment um, at my home, which is the Vestra 2. <laughs> you create the appointment, check the payment, everything okay, and confirm the booking. That's it. Easy and fast. <laughs> so what, what are our next steps? So we are uh, planning to hire a CMO um, in order to get the first thousand specialists on board as soon as possible. But in order to get that first mover advantage, we also need uh, an investor to realize that. And after that, we are starting with a pilot in Amsterdam um, focusing on one category first, uh, barbers, and once the pilot has been proven to be successful, then we roll out to other regions and other categories. Thank you very much for listening, and if you have any... Thank you, thank you, Arian. Uh, what a treat. Huh? So. <clears throat> I'm definitely in need of some spot treatments after this, so I'll, I'll certainly use your platform. And uh, now we are ready to present our last project, and um, it's all about being uh, the stranger in a different city, or maybe a stranger in your own city. So a lot of our students, they come not only from different walks of life, but they also come from all over the world. We have students from America, we have students from Middle East. And they've been guests in Amsterdam for, for nine weeks and um, they still found time to enjoy themselves. So they're not all, 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 only students, but, all, but also tourists. And uh, people who, are, who try to find their way in Amsterdam and to spend their free time, they need some guidance. And this project is about that guidance. It's called Guided. And I'm going to give a floor to uh, Team Guided and Dieter, who is going to present his product. So give a round of applause. Okay, uh, thank you, Andy. Um, uh, this is Oscar. Uh, I'm Dieter. Um, I would like to start with a question. Uh, who of you is not originally from Amsterdam? Okay. Oh, that's actually that's more than I thought, but uh, 
Uh, I'm also not originally from Amsterdam. I'm from Nijmegen. I've just moved here two months ago. Um, and whenever I'm new in a place or when I'm traveling, uh, I like to explore the place where I am. Uh, and I like to know more about my surroundings. Um, sadly, I feel the options for this are a bit li limited. Um, I can join a tourist group and be guided around the city. I can uh, do an audio tour, um, but they're often very generic and uh, boring. Um, and what I'm interested in is the stories of the people who live in the city, like authentic stories about anything. Um, someone who offers their own guide through a museum, uh, someone who tells an interesting story about a church or a police officer who might be uh, sharing his experiences. Um, and that's why we made Guided. Um, Guided is a location-based app for storytelling. Um, and it's an app where anyone can share their story anywhere. Um, we'll have a look now at the, the website and you see the first thing is actually stories you can inst instantly play. And when you go further down you see landmarks and that's how uh, the website's organized. All the stories are attached to a landmark and that's how you explore the stories. So we can see all the landmarks by clicking the button. And these are all the landmarks that have a, a story attached to them. So actually I want to have a look at the Victoria Hotel because every morning I cross it and also when I get back. Um, and I don't know if anyone has noticed it but this, there's a little, like it's a tiny house and that's surrounded by the Victoria Hotel. It's completely built in. Um, so I want to know more about um, this hotel. And we see there's actually a story uploaded by someone. Um, so we're going to play the story. Hi, this is Fago. You are now in front of the Victoria Hotel. Do you see that the Victoria Hotel is built around a little house? There is an interesting story behind this house, which I would like to tell you in this story. Okay, we're going to stop it now because uh, two reasons. If you want to hear the story, you have to go to the website. And uh, the other reason is, uh, I, I, you know, I know Fico. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is go, I'm, I'm get, giving him an upvote so he ranks higher in uh, the stories that are presented. And I want to know more about the story and see that indeed it is Fico uh, who uploaded the story. So I want to look, have a look at his profile. Um, okay, this is Fico I know. Um, I want to follow him so that next time uh, I'm at my, my own profile, I will see anything new that he has uploaded. So when now when I go to my own profile, I will see FICO's latest story and also the la latest story of one of our teachers um, and another story by FICO. Um, <coughs> here I, I'm not following that many people at one, one landmark and a couple of storytellers. Also I see I have not told a story yet. Um, I feel like I should be one of the people who also tells a story. Um, so we're going to change that. But first I would like to switch to the mobile version of the app because we focus or design actually in mobile because when you're exploring a city you're basically in a mobile and that's the best way to both um, experience your surroundings <coughs> at the same time he hear something about it. So it looks the same as the web page um, but the thing I like most actually about the entire app is my favorite feature is the discover nearby stories. What it does is whenever you're in front of a building or a monument or any landmark basically, if you want to know more about it, you just click the button discover nearby stories and it will go to the nearest landmark. In this case, uh, ALAB. It's correct, we are in ALAB. Um, and so I feel that this is a good opportunity to add a story because I've basically lived here for the last two months. Uh, I might have something to add. Uh, so we click add a story. As a description, um, we pick my experience at Lavagon. The description we skip now because it will take a long time. <laughs> uh, category will be personal, a language will be English. We have, and then we add an image and an, and an audio file. With the audio file you can just record with your phone and, um, and then add to the, the story.
that's it. Now it's on the website, and we can instantly play it. <laughs> if if the Bluetooth works, then then we can instantly play it. <laughs> Five beautiful products. Oh yeah. So guys, uh, thank you very much. These were the demos uh, for tonight. Um, we have some bites. We have drinks in the room. We'll take away the chairs. We'll put on a little bit of music. Please feel free to walk up to the students, uh, teachers, or me if you would like to learn more about either their projects or about Le Bagon. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>